Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I am currently doing a series on how I started my school. So if you are new, make sure you go and check out the video before this that sets this video up. And if you are here from the last video, thank you so much. Today, I will be answering four questions. These questions come from three awesome teachers who started watching my video, my last video, and who has been giving me feedback. So um, two of those teachers are actually teacher YouTubers like myself. Um, I, I actually follow them. Uh, one of them is a happy teacher, a true story, and Lynn Daniels. I will be sure to link their channels in the description box below. So if you are interested in finding other interesting teachers with interesting stories and following their journey of educating today's youth make sure you check them out so the four questions that i will answer today is one how long did it take me to start my school how much money did i have when i initially started what are the legal things one must do in order to have a school what are the requirements for accreditation and how i found my first pupils guys welcome back again i am cindy the ld educator and before i jump into this today is president's day and uh, teachers here in the states most of us enjoy the day off i am actually recovering from being really ill on friday it was the beginning of our winter break and i actually spent the entire day in bed so i am feeling much better right now hopefully i'm looking better hopefully prayerfully i actually hung out today with my daughters i actually took miss aubrey to get her hair done um, and it turned out really really cute as you can see she is an absolute hoot we call her that aubrey and then uh, miss lucy my two-year-old um, i definitely love my little babies well okay well let's go ahead on and jump right into answering these questions so one of the things that you have to go ahead on and think about now is what type of school you are interested in having you can have a charter school it could be private or public you can have a, a religious private school or you can have a private school that is a nonprofit school or a private school that is private now if you are interested in having a charter school this is probably not the place no i am a hundred percent certain this is not the place for you now i didn't go down this road because a private school is whoo it's a lot like there's a lot of paperwork there's a lot of regulations and honestly it's not something that can be done by one person so you have to actually have an alliance a core people who re really believed in the mission of that private school who were really um vested their time was vested their finances is vested and so if you don't have like some type of huge organization or business or rich famous person back in this then uh charter school is probably not what you want to get involved in right now for me i chose a private school and to be real honest with you, a lot of this, once again, has just fallen into my lap. So I don't know how much of my process is actually replicatable, but it certainly will give you inspiration. I know prior to actually starting out on this journey, for me, when you said private, I always thought of elitist, right? And that definitely wasn't me. I'm by no means rich. Um, never was this even kind of on my radar like I had always said that I wanted to be a director of a special education program but I never thought that I would actually step out and start a school and like that I am being entirely honest with you but the thing about a private school is that there's not a lot of specific regulations making it an easy entry for someone who does not have a lot of money and that definitely was me so i guess we could go ahead on and jump into that first question how long did it take me to actually start my school and how much money did i need to be real honest with you like it took me less than four weeks i know like 
It sounds like amazingly unbelievable, but that is the God honest truth. It took me four weeks to become provisionally accredited. And to be honest, if you wanted to start a school that wasn't accredited, it probably would take you less time than that. For me, um, it was less than four weeks to actually get my business structure with um, everything together and hold up, drum roll please. Uh. <laughs> I only had $75 in my nonprofit banking account. I am telling that absolute truth. Now, a little bit later, yes, did I come up with more money? Did I have some family members pouring into me? Yes, but when I became provisionally accredited, I only had $75 in my banking account. So right off the bat, if you are a teacher now um, in public schools or a charter school or even in some other private school and you're not happy and you know you were called to be a teacher and you're thinking that one day you want to start a school, know that it is really within your reach. Like if my story does nothing else for you, it should inspire you that what is now my reality can be your reality reality too. Now, like I said, I do, for me, I am a believer and I believe that I have been called to walk this journey, this path. And I believe that a lot of supernatural things happen uh, because a lot of the things that just or the doors that was open for me was it was really beyond my control and when i tell you i i knew little little like i really did i didn't even know that the things that i had already had like put me in a prime position to be able to actually have this school so i do believe that um, it was it was not just a right place at the right time, but um, God has put this call upon my life. And prayerfully, that's the same thing for you, that you believe that you're called to do this or you have this dream, you have this passion to do this. So don't allow money and time to talk you out of this because you can do it. I, I am so, I, I believe so much in teachers. I, I, I feel like we are in an educational crisis. I do believe in public schools, but they are not meeting the needs of every child or every child does not come to school being able to receive from the school. And so I think um, private schools at this point uh, will meet a great need. So the next question is, what legal things do you need in order to start a school? Now, of course, this is gonna be different um, for each state, and this probably would definitely be different if you're watching this in another country. But once again, I think you should really do your research because I think most of you will be so surprised at the fact that for a lot of places there are there is just not a whole lot of regulation now in order to just say you have a school and it's not accredited all you need is a business license true a business license a safe place to conduct your business as well as you know some plan for curricula and um, there's some minor things that you have to do like reporting the attendance at the beginning of each year of whatever students are in your school and that's it and you have yourself a school now most of you aspire not only to have a school, but you want an accredited school, right? Yes, of course you do, because it will give you, uh, I guess, more credibility. Unfortunately, a lot of times now, you know, so there's been so many people who have done things or just make certain things or make the process of like not being a part of a traditional setting look bad so you do want to be able to set yourself apart by saying that you are accredited which means that you did some extra things you put some extra things in place that the state is saying you know at a minimal 
this is a place that you can kind of be assured that they're going to be doing what they say they're going to do so once again don't be surprised but <laughs> it is not a laundry list of things that you have to do First of all, once again, you still need some type of business structure, a business license. Um, I happen to be a nonprofit organization, so there were some extra things that I did, but I didn't do those things specifically for the school, and I kind of talk about um, my nonprofit status um, a little bit later. In addition, uh, there's a little bit more regulation over uh, the building in which you work at. You are not able to work out of your home and be accredited. So um, in my county, there are some specific zone things that you have to meet. Um, and definitely once you actually get started, you will have to have the fire marshals to come in and you will have to have um, a fire inspection where they would kind of go over a whole bunch of different stuff just to make sure one the building is um handicap accessible and that it is safe to conduct business in it also has to be headed by a person who has a master's degree and that master's degree does not have to be education um, but it can be pretty much anything and that so think about the person or the director um, the school head or the whatever you call that that leadership title but that person has to have a master's degree in addition you have to have at least uh, five minimal students and you also have to have like I guess your school plan so almost like a business plan um, things like uh, the teacher code of conduct, the student handbook, um, different plans, the emergency plans, how you're doing fire drills and all of that good stuff. Um, and that could be somewhat extensive, but it's still not very difficult to put together. Now, consider this for me, even that part was done less than four weeks. So it's not anything that's too terribly hard that you couldn't put together yourself. And then of course, how or what your vision is in working with your students. Um, you do have to teach the basics of um, reading, language arts, math, and science. Oh, and your staff so teachers only have to have a minimum of a bachelor's degree or three years of experience in education or health now those criteria came from the accredited agency that i am under now this is something else that was like a new piece of information that i found out once i started this journey as far as accrediting organization most states have one, more than one accrediting organization. And I don't know if SACS is like this nationwide thing here in the United States, but that is the organization that um, provides accreditation for um, public schools and even charter schools and even some private schools that actually seek out that accreditation. However, there are other accrediting bodies that are not that are not as strenuous. Matter of fact, one of my mentors who I met later on basically told me at this point, she was like, don't even think about SACS at this point. She said, you know, it's, you know, it's awesome to have to say that SACS came in and they did this thorough um, evaluation of your program and they are, you know, accrediting you. But she was like, basically, basically she said, it's not needed to really grow your business. And she said it was for her, it was uh, a lot more work than what it was worth. And she did pass, but it's something I'm not even sure if she would keep it up. So anyway, that's a minimum. And I'm gonna talk a lot more about accreditation in another video. And then our last question is, how did I find my pupils? Okay, so this is really interesting once again. I told you guys like things just kind of fell into place for me but i'm going to tell you my story and then i am going to give you ideas about how you can begin to um, seek out pupils or find those who are your ideal students um so for me prior to leaving public schools i was in administration 
Um, and I enjoyed it. Um, I am so happy that I had the opportunity because I really needed the, the leadership experience of just kind of leading people. Uh, but because I was no longer hands-on with students, I actually missed my students. And yet, as a result, I actually started a nonprofit organization and the sole purpose was to simply mentor students who had learning disabilities, okay? That was it. And so I had this organization and the whole time that I was an administrator and I believe I was in administration for about five years, each year I selected maybe five or six students who I just personally loved on uh, that we used to go out to eat around the city. I used to take them out to different basketball games. We used to have our little powwow sessions that we would just kind of talk about life. And it wasn't even all about academics. Now, if someone needed help with something, I did, but it was just more so being a trusted adult presence in their life. So I had a nonprofit organization, um, what, about five or six years prior to even starting my school. So when I decided that I was gonna start a school, I actually reached out to some of those students who was in my um, mentoring program. And they happened to be some of the same students who, um, as I mentioned in the first video, that didn't pass all of the required state tests to actually get a high school diploma. So a lot of the, those kids left school with a certificate of attendance. So it was um, at least two of those students that I reached out to and said, hey, I am doing this crazy thing. I know that you're probably still interested in getting a high school diploma. Um, if you work with me at this point, you don't have to pay anything. I need students, okay? You need a high school <laughs> diploma and I need students. Initially, I started off with one student, one student that came from that group. And then, uh, so that first semester, which I started in January, I only had one student. That fall, another student from that group joined me, and then I had someone else to uh, recommend another student. So in all, by the time the fall came, I had five students. Now also, remember, although I'm not getting too much into the accrediting part, but initially I got a provisional accreditation because one of the things that I didn't have was, was five students. So my whole goal over the summer was to pick up um, four more students and that actually happened. So that was kind of my process. You know, it wasn't difficult whatsoever, but thinking about you, if I had it to do all over again and if it didn't happen for me that easy, I definitely would have probably still used the nonprofit more strategically at building relationships with parents who would have potentially been people that I could have reached out to. So the my big takeaway for you is to find those parents of students who are not necessarily performing well, those parents who are not happy with um, how things are going with their, their current placement. In addition, you could start summer programs. Um, if you start a summer program, whether it's a tutoring program or just a regular summer program, and that could actually uh, put you in a position where you're not even, you know, trying to recruit from your school, but that's something that was open up for everybody. You're starting to meet relationships um, or you're starting to make relationships with parents and then you're finding out what their needs are. In addition, I feel like churches are always an untapped um, resource. Uh, one of my students that eventually joined me in that fall semester was referred to me by a church. It was a church who had an educational program. They did um, GED programming and this student actually went because he wanted his high school diploma. But after they did his initial intake, they discovered that he was basically a non-reader. And so um, someone at that particular church knew of my journey of starting a school and they 
actually referred him to me. So I think um, that would be a, a, a source of interest. And you know, I if I had it to do all over again, again, um, I was numero uno in this. Like I was the center of this. I did it all by myself. But um, I would even get parents who um, are really interested in starting something different because when you have parents who are fighting for you then you don't have to do a whole bunch of marketing because they will speak for you and I do believe that with you know there are so many students with who learned so differently and I'm not even just talking about it about students who have um, learning disabilities like the ones that I work with I think in general like we are no longer that probably never been in a one-size-fits-all you know we're we're starting to see now that there are so many people outside of that box and so you know parents want um, an alternative to public schools for so many reasons um, probably about maybe two years after I started my school I had a parent who reached out to me whose child was like really high functioning her only issue was that she had school anxiety like she just did not like going to school being surrounded with so many people so my environment became the just the perfect place so um, basically that's it I hope you guys found this video very informative please remember put a couple of comments down below if I didn't answer in detail something particular that you wanted to know please put it down there i have a couple of other um requests from lee and daniel and i definitely will be talking about funding accreditation paperwork and a whole lot more in upcoming videos so you guys make sure you check back all right bye